everyone. Today we are going to learn about chapter 3 momentum and impulse. Let's start with subtopic 3.1 momentum and impulse. The learning outcomes is to define the momentum and impulse. Okay, let's check it out. What is momentum? The symbol is P. The definition is the product between mass and velocity. The formula is P equals to mv. What is P? P is momentum. M is mass in kilograms. V is velocity in meter per second. Momentum is a vector quantity and the SI unit of linear momentum is kg m as negative 1. Momentum is also called as mass in motion. How about the direction of momentum? The direction of the momentum is the same as the direction of the velocity. Which one is easier to stop? Car or bicycle? Of course, bicycle right? Because a bicycle is less massive compared to a car. As you know, an object at any size can have large momentum because it depends on the speed of an object as well as its mass. Meaning that more speed, more momentum. More mass, more momentum. Next, let's learn about impulse. The symbol is J. And the definition is the product of a force F and the time T. Or, impulse is the change of momentum. The formula is J equals to F change of T equals to change of P where change of P is final momentum minus initial momentum. So, the formula will be J equals to F change of T equals to M in the bracket V minus U. Impulse is a vector quantity and the direction is same as velocity in linear motion. And the SI unit for impulse is kg m as negative 1 or newton second. So now, we will learn about FT graph. F against T graph is to determine impulse. Look at F against T graph. The area under the graph which is in green color is in is impulse. The force that produces impulse is called as impulsive force. Next, let's see an example of impulse. What is the function of airbag? Airbag are used in motor vehicle because they are able to reduce the effect of the force experienced by a person during an accident. Airbags extend the time required to stop the momentum of the driver and passenger. During a collision, the motion of the driver and passenger carries them towards the windshield. If they are stopped by a collision with the windshield, it would result in a large force exerted over a short time in order to bring them to a stop. If instead of hitting the windshield, the driver and passenger hit an airbag, then the time of the impact is increased. Increasing the time of the impact results in a decrease in the force. That's explained about impulse. Now, we learn about the next subtopic. The next subtopic is 3.2 Conservation of Linear Momentum. The learning outcomes is to state the principle of conservation of linear momentum. The principle of conservation of linear momentum states that in an isolated or closed system, the total momentum of that system is constant. Or, when the net external force on a system is zero, the total momentum of that system is constant. Meaning that the total of initial momentum is equal to the total of final momentum. Or, it can be written in symbol like this. Now, 
Now, we look at elastic versus inelastic collision. There are two types of collisions, which are elastic collision and inelastic collision. In collisions, the total momentum of the colliding object is always conserved. But, the total kinetic energy is may not be conserved because it could change to heat or sound energy. Alright, so now we will continue next lesson which is chapter 4, forces. Alright, now we are going to learn about chapter 4, forces. Start with first subtopic which is 4.1, basic of forces and free body diagram. Look at the learning outcomes of this subtopic. First, identify the forces acting on a body in different situations for normal force, weight, friction, tension, and external forces, either pull or push. Second learning outcome is sketch free body diagram. Let's learn what is force. Force is defined as the physical quantities that act on an object that causes it to move or change shape. It is a vector quantity and the unit is kg ms negative 2 or newton. Now let's learn basic of forces. Start with normal force or known as reaction force. The symbol is M for normal force and R for reaction force. What is the normal force or reaction force? Normal force or reaction force is defined as the force that acts on the object when the object is in contact with a surface. The direction of normal force or reaction force is always perpendicular to the surface. Now let's look at normal force or reaction force in different situations. For case 1, horizontal surface, let's say an object on the horizontal surface like this, how to sketch the normal force? The direction of the normal force is always perpendicular to the surface like this. Look at this figure. Let's say an object attached to a ceiling. The direction of the normal force is perpendicular to the surface. Next is case 2. An object is being on inclined plane. So the direction of the normal force is perpendicular to the surface. Next is case 3. Let's say an object attached to a wall like this. The direction of the normal force is always perpendicular to the surface. Next is weight. The symbol is W. Weight is defined as the force of an object due to gravitational attraction of the earth, also known as gravitational force. The symbol is Fg. It always directed toward the center of the earth, meaning that the direction is always vertically downward. The equation is Fg equals to W equals to Mg. For case 1, which is horizontal surface, let's say an object lies at rest on a flat horizontal surface like this. The direction of weight is vertically downward. Next, let's say an object lies at rest on a rough inclined plane in case 2 like this. The direction of weight straight downward like this. Next, case 3, hanging object. Let's say we have the object hang, hanging like this. So the direction of weight is vertically downward. Next, basic of force is frictional force. The symbol is small letter f. What is frictional force? Frictional force is the retarding force that resists motion of an object that is in contact with the surface. It is independent of the area of contact between the two surfaces and it also directed it also directly proportional to the reaction force or normal force. So you can write like this F is directly proportional to N or R. Look at case 1 which is horizontal surface. Consider a box of this mass is pulled along a rough horizontal surface by a horizontal force. The direction of frictional force is opposite direction to the motion of the box. Next, case 2 for inclined plane. Let's say we put a box on the inclined plane. 
and then the boss is pulled up along a rough inclined plane by a force F. The direction of the frictional force is always opposite direction to the motion of the box. Next is tension in the string or rope or cable. The symbol is capital letter T. What is tension? Tension is the force due to the string, rope, or wire, and others that hanging. It also defined as the force that acting along its length in the direction away from the point of action towards the center of the string or rope. Meaning that you have to sketch the direction of T is always away from the object. Now look at tension in different situations. For case 1, horizontal surface, consider a box is pulled by using a light string along a horizontal surface. The direction of tension is directed away from the object. Next, case 2 is pulley. You can see here the direction of tension is directed away from the object. For this figure, direction of tension for 5 kg is to the right because the direction is away from the object. For 9 kg, the direction of tension is upward because Tension is directed away from 9 kg object. Next is external force, either pull or push. External force is the force because of pulling an object or pushing an object. The symbol is capital letter F. For example, given a box is pulled along a rough horizontal surface and then is pulled by horizontal force. So how to sketch and label the external force? Since the acceleration is to the right, so the motion is to the right. So it means that we pull with external force with capital letter F to the right. So the direction is to the right. Now we are going to learn about free body diagram. What is free body diagram? The short form is FBD. Free body diagram is defined as a diagram to show all the forces acting on an object in a given situation without the body. A free body diagram is a special example of a vector diagram. So we have to put dot as center of mass. Let's look on how to sketch free body diagram for different cases. For case 1, horizontal surface first you have to put dot as center of mass and then the force that acting on this object is normal force which is the normal force is pointing perpendicular to the surface and then weight weight is pointing downward and then don't forget to label normal force and weight correctly Look at this figure. This figure shows another situation for horizontal surface. Let's say we have a box is pulled along a rough horizontal surface by a horizontal force, like this. A thing with a center of mass here. And then you have to identify forces that acting on this box. We have normal force which is perpendicular to the surface and then we have external force direct, directed to, towards right and then we have weight, the direction is downward. Last, we have frictional force, the direction of frictional force is to the left because the direction is opposite direction to the acceleration of the box. Next, we have case 2 which is inclined plane. We consider a box is pulled up along a rough inclined plane by a force F. So how to sketch free body diagram for this figure? We start with dot. Dot is center of mass of the box. Since the box is pulled up 
along a rough inclined plane so we have to sketch the external force F is going up it's parallel to the acceleration of the box okay and then the box will have frictional force which is direction is opposite direction to the external force because the inclined plane is a rough surface so that we have frictional force and then we have here is normal force the direction of normal force is perpendicular to the surface to the inclined plane so now our inclined plane is the surface okay next is weight the direction of weight is directed vertically downward like this so this one is free body diagram for case 2 for inclined plane okay next is case 3 for hanging object using the cable or string or rope for case 3a let's say we have a box mass m hanging like this so you have to start with dot to represent the center of mass and then what we have here is tension directed away from the object so the direction is like upward upward direction and then don't forget to label with T this one is tension and then we have weight directed downward vertically downward for weight this one is free body diagram for case 3A ok now look at case 3B the object is hanging like this so what we have here is weight vertically downward and don't forget to label W and then we have two cable here and then you have to differentiate between T1 and T2 ok let's say for T1 T1 is to the right because the object is here so the direction of T1 is away from object M so T1 represent towards right and then this one is T2 directed away from the object okay this one is free body diagram for 3B